Good afternoon, everyone. Um, when I considered what story I was going to tell today or whose story I was going to tell, it was really hard to think about because there are so many men and women who I admire and who have shown um, courage and, and um, skills that I aspire to. Um, but in the end, I fa finally settled on this woman as she encompasses much of what I'd like to be. I was first introduced to Jackie Pullinger's story when I first became a Christian. Her courage, her leadership skills, her integrity, um, mixed in with the outrageously exciting stories of, the ho of how the Holy Spirit intervened in her story, made it an, an, an adventure I wanted in on. Imagine going to work every day in a slum area. Everywhere you walk, you walk in unimaginable sewage and waste. You have to walk with your head down because if you look up, slop being thrown from the tenements above you will fall onto you. The streets are filled with homeless men, women and children. Most are lying in a drug-induced stupor. Most of these will die and you can't help everyone. But you can be faithful to the mission God called you to do. And this is exactly what Jackie Pullinger did. She was a person who, who loved her saviour and followed his will. She wrote her story in a book called Chasing the Dragon, a woman's struggle in Hong Kong against the darkness. This is exactly the kind of woman Jackie Pullinger was. From a very young age, she knew she wanted to do what Jesus asked her to do, to go where Jesus asked her to go, and she did just that, with conviction and with, with nothing else but Jesus to lead her and guide her. She wrote a fantastic book, and her story is in Chasing the Dragon, A Woman's Struggle Against Darkness in Hong Kong. Um, you can get it on Amazon and I really recommend you read it. Jackie knew she wanted to be a missionary right from an early age when she was in Sunday school and her Sunday school teacher would tell her stories of adventures that missionaries had across the world that inspired something in her and she always looked to be that. Her teenage years were normal, she went to music college but after that, after she'd grown up, she took that decision and she made the decision to be a, a missionary um, I, I know there's an amazing dream she had, she refers to in her book, where she talks about dreaming about, because her understanding was that all missionaries go to Africa. So in her dream, there was a map, and in the middle of the map was Hong Kong. And, it was, and she was thinking, but that's, Hong Kong's not in Africa. So it was a real learning curve where, she, where God, even in her dreams, was saying, no, I want you in Hong Kong. So she set off. She would end up working in the walled city at Hong Kong. Kowloon walled city was an ungoverned, densely populated settlement in Kowloon City, Hong Kong. Originally a Chinese military fort, the walled city became an enclave after the new territories were leased to the UK by China in 1898. Its population increased dramatically following the Japanese occupation of Hong Kong during World War II. It rapidly became one of the most densely populated places the world has ever seen. The walled city was a mere six acres, but had a population of 30,000 people. Opium and heroin abuse, chasing the dragon, was an epidemic in the walled city. Many of the addicts used a method where they smoked the opium rather than injecting it, because to inject it would have been lethal. When Jackie got to Hong Kong, she started a youth club. Many of the boys who came were members of the triad gangs. These boys were rough and used to violence, including murder. They were sceptical of this British woman, but gradually over the years as Jackie continued to live among them, they began to trust her. Points that really hit me in, in the story is how Jackie would go to bed every night fully clothed. Jackie lived in the walled city. She didn't live outside and come in. She lived amongst the people that Jesus had called her to serve. And she would go to bed every night fully clothed because she was always ready. She never knew who would be knocking, requesting her help, needing her support. So she was ready all day, 24 hours a day to do God's will and to love and serve the people God had called her to. And most of the missionaries at that time um, who went to Hong Kong, did some work, 
They often would stay outside the city and come into the city and they often would go home um, after their funds run out or after the pressure of, this, of the misery they saw just got too much. But Jackie stayed. She stayed and she lived there and committed herself. And it was because of this that many of the gang members became Christians. You'll have to read the book to hear the miracles the way the Holy Spirit convicted and converted and miraculously healed. When the gang members kicked the drug habit, they stayed away from drugs for life. The boys turned to Jesus. Many of them went on to witness to their families and, and former gang friends. When the addicts who really wanted to change would see the miracle of healing that faith in Jesus brings, they were willing to listen to the gospel. Not all accepted the truth, but many did. Some were afraid of going through cold turkey from their addiction. The pain of these withdrawals was horrific and some even died during withdrawals. But many of those who Jackie worked with who turned to Christ for forgiveness and trusted him for, the new, for their new life never went through the withdrawals. And some didn't even have as much as a headache. These miraculous healings drew others to Christ. Not everyone, of course, had complete relief, and some who turned to Jesus did not reform immediately. They needed help, so Jackie opened up homes and soon many were begging her to give them a place to stay and overcome their addiction. Jackie would try and keep them for as long as possible while they changed their lives and reformed and learned how to live a Christian life. Many of the boys who had converted worked in the homes. This freed Jackie to continue to go into the streets and tell more people about Jesus. Over the years, Jackie's efforts led to an amazing degree of success. She not only helped gang members kick their habits, but she even had a chance to speak to some of the dangerous gang leaders. She won their respect. In fact, part of her story, people had come and destroyed the youth club she had built and worked for and vandalised it. And it was the gang members who, who knew that work, the work she was doing was so effective who sent bodyguards in to guard her and guard her place of work. The gangs had a rule that once you'd become a gang member, you were a member for life. One of the things Jackie told the boys was once you become a Christian you can't serve two masters. You either serve Jesus or you serve the gangs. And obviously this was this put the boys into um, difficult positions and and they and when they made the decision to follow Jesus they were potentially in a lot of danger. Here again God intervened. Jackie, because of her relationship with the bosses, was able to talk to them about this and challenge them. And because of their respect for Jackie, they agreed that um, they wouldn't bother the boys once they'd become Christians. She was somewhat successful because, strange as it was, the gang bosses didn't want their gang members to be drug addicts themselves. Whilst their business was to get to sell dr drugs to other people, they wanted their own workers to remain free from drugs because they knew that once people are on drugs, they're ineffective and they're not able to carry out the role um, as well as they in wanted to. So because of that, they recognised the work Jackie was doing as far more uh, as important. So they respected her. And because of all of this, the drug bosses renounced their claim on the boys' lives once they'd become a Christian. This was unprecedented in Hong Kong gang culture. And again, truly a work of God. Years rolled by and Jackie opened several more homes. The work expanded and with the help of some American missionaries, she set up the St. Stephen's Society. It is still in existence today and is one of the most successful organisations in the world, rescuing hundreds of young people from a life of misery on the streets. The walled city was eventually pulled down and cleaned up in the 1990s, but Jackie continued her work there. Today there are over 200 people living in different homes, coming off of drugs and being helped to a new life. And this work has expanded to other countries across the world. Jackie Pullinger lived the Great Commission. 
Her story and others like her remind me of the part of the Bible in the book of Matthew which talks of the story of the sheep and the goats and the story of how God the King will separate his people into sheep and goats and how God separates into sheep and goats depends on how we have lived our lives in serving him, how each of us had treated him, feeding him when he was hungry clothing him when he was naked. In the story, some people ask God, when did I see you hungry and thirsty? And the king answered them by saying, truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. Jackie rose to that challenge with determination, courage and integrity, which is why her story is one worth telling and worth hearing. Thank you.